Let your quilting skills reach new heights with the Go North Carolina Star 12 inch finished die. This geometric block features 16 shapes to create AccuQuilt's first seven by seven grid block. The die board can effortlessly cut a five color block in just one pass through a Go or Go Big electric fabric cutter or even the studio cutter with the appropriate adapter. This easy to use block on board or bob die features screen printed letters, built in quarter inch seam allowances, specialized dog eared corners, and best of all, no Y seams, making it so fast and easy to cut, piece, and sew this magnificent block. Combine this spectacular die with other 12 inch finished bob dies, compatible go cubes, and 12 inch setting triangles to create extraordinary throw quilts, aesthetically pleasing table runners, and more. Begin your next amazing project with the Go North Carolina Star, because at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Are you or someone you love an avid quilter? Meet the Ready, Set, Go Ultimate Fabric Cutting System. This fabric cutter takes the strain out of fabric cutting, meaning less chance of injury and better quilts made faster. The Ultimate Fabric Cutting System includes the Go, our innovative fabric cutter with an easy to turn handle that makes cutting fabric safer, faster, and more accurate. This 15 pound fabric cutter has a carrying handle and folding mechanism, so it's portable and easy to store. The Ready, Set, Go also includes the Go Cube Mix and Match 8 inch block, which features eight dies of commonly used geometric shapes and a corresponding cutting mat. The Go Cube Mix and Match system has endless pattern possibilities, but it comes with a 16 page pattern book with two quilt patterns to get you started. We like to say the Ready, Set, Go is the ultimate fabric cutting system because it truly comes with everything you need. That includes our Go Strip Cutter, two and a half inch, which finishes to a two inch finished strip, a corresponding cutting mat to make cutting binding strips easier than ever. We've even included a die pick to make die maintenance painless. To help quilters feel confident on their quilting journey, we've also included the Go Cube Mix and Match Blocks and Quilt Pattern Book by Eleanor Burns. It's packed with tips and tricks in addition to inspiration. Look at some of the beautiful projects you can create with this ultimate fabric cutting system. At AccuQuilt, we want to spread the joy of quilting to all, and the Go makes cutting fabric easier than traditional scissors or rotary cutting. AccuQuilt, because cutting time means quilting more.
Bring even more flair to your next quilting project with the Go Llama die. This applique die allows for up to four layers of pre-fused cotton fabric to be cut in any Go fabric cutter or create a fuzzy friend with a layer of wool, felt, or fleece. Think about pairing this fun die with other adorable animal shapes to create a zoo-filled project everyone will love. At just under six inches tall and four inches wide, the completed llama shape can be used with compatible Go cubes or block and board dies to create snuggly throw quilts, charming pillows, cute table runners, and more. Get ready to create llamas galore because at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Quilters, today's show is all about modernizing a traditional quilt block. Stay tuned for plenty of thrilling inspiration. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert. Welcome to today's launch party called More Looks for a Classic Block. Today we are relaunching the Go Priscilla Stripe 6 inch finish die. That's right. This die was so popular, we just had to bring it back. Now we'll also be joined by our special guest, the one and only Barbara Brackman, to provide this dye's history. I'm excited to hear what Barbara has to say about the Priscilla Stripe block. She knows so much. She really does. So much. All right, and we have plenty more to share as well. We have stupendous prizes, tons of new project ideas, and a super fun trunk show. Well, let's not wait any longer. Let's see our now permanent go Priscilla Stripe dye. Once you make your first Priscilla Stripe block, you'll have a new favorite die. This six inch finish block on board or bob die utilizes seven geometric shapes to cut a single four color block in just one pass through any Go fabric cutter, including the Studio 2 with the appropriate adapter. Making the Priscilla Stripe block with this die means there's no paper piecing required, allowing quilters to effortlessly create any of the free downloadable patterns available on our website. Think about pairing this charming block with other bobs that finish to six inches, 
compatible Go Cubes or the Go Setting Triangle 6 inch finish die to produce unique throw quilts, elaborate table runners, fun wall hangings, and more. The creative possibilities are endless with this easy to use die because at AccuQuilt we help you cut time so you can quilt more. All right, it is Mardi Gras. Yes, so it let's is. let's kick off this little, Mar little Mardi Gras party with a look at a basic block from the Go Priscilla Stripe six inch finish die. I just happen to have one or Imagine. two or three ready yeah. for today's show. All right, you wanna talk about it? So this is the block and it is just a fun little party of a block that is always made me smile. Now, whether it makes you think of party hats or yes. pinatas, it's just a fun festive little block. All right, so I'm gonna hold up the die. Um, so this is the die that cuts the Priscil Priscilla stripes. And it is a block on board of, right. or a bob die, which means it has all the pieces to make one of these six inch finished blocks in just one pass through the cutter. That's right. It's great for creating all kinds of designs that we'll be showing you, but it is also a great way to use your scraps. That's right. Now, here's a look at a, at a scrappy version of it. Yes. Right? So when you first look at the block, it might look kind of complicated, but the die makes it so easy. It's just four identical units. Right All the pieces have specialized dog ears. We'll show you. Yep, Pam's right pointing them right there. And all the pe those specialized dog ears make lining up all your pieces really simple. Right. Now, this die also has screen printing. Yes. For easy placement of your fabric. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've to help keep your shapes. Now, this is shape A. And Erica, let's talk about the shape because it is a directional it shape. It is a directional shape. So that means you need to fan fold your fabric. Now, I used a solid white on here. So... Right. It didn't really matter, right. but if you are using a pattern fabric, you will want to be sure you fan fold for the background so that you have both the right and the left side of the unit. Right. And we're going to switch things up, right? I think we are. I think we should make a scrappy one. I think you know so too. I love that. All right. So here's the block that Erica made. So what we've done is we have a scrap basket here from all of this fun little we projects. We actually have several of them. So many of them. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take these scraps and we're gonna lay them out. So Erica, let's, um, so what you wanna do is you really wanna work on that lengthwise grain. Right, so let's find where our lengthwise grain is. See, lots of stretch. Yep. But look, high and tight. Yeah. This is that lengthwise grain, okay? And we just need two for our, we're just gonna cut. We're just gonna for, cut one, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna lay that down here. Notice, quilters, I didn't yeah, but, trim it. But you're gonna have to fan fold it because we need our right and our oh, left. Oh, yes. So we're okay, making see, one. Listen to Erica. Sometimes she knows some stuff. Sometimes she listens to me. Sometimes. <laughs> Not every day. Not every okay, day. But let's do pink <laughs> She then. doesn't want me to get a big head. I know, here, all right. So this one, actually, we, um, obviously, I use to make sure. As a leader or as a test of sewing test machine? Just the sewing machine. Okay. We really did just grab a, a handful of scraps yeah. out. So okay. this is, we're gonna show you real life here. Yep. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, oh, that's actually pretty good. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth. Now, okay. I'm not gonna trim this part because we're just gonna run it through the okay. cutter. Um, I just find that that works easier. Okay. okay. And then shape B, Erica, is um, the corners. The corners. And we've got this nice piece. I really like this print. Yes. So let's just use this right here. Okay. And do we want to rough cut it or do we want to just lay I it on I think we there? just want to lay it on okay. there. Okay. We're going to live dangerously. We are. Okay, now let's talk about these shapes. Because here is the lengthwise blade. Yes. And we had a huge discussion about how oh, to lay your fabric we did. on this. Indeed we did. So what you want to do is find that lengthwise grain. There's that stretch. Yeah, that's the so bias. Here. There's that lengthwise grain right there. Okay. Oh, maybe. Let's find some. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually lay it over, this is the lengthwise okay. grain, right? Oh, and should we do another for the piece D? Yeah, sure. Let's do, because we can. Yeah. All right, look. 
we're doing scraps. We can do whatever we want yeah. to. But that size is just perfect for it. Yeah, and so see, we didn't cut anything down. We didn't do anything. Now this is on a six by 12 die board. It's gonna yep. fit through all of our Go cutters, including that Go Me, right. um, that Go, which is part of the Ready, Set, Go, and then our Go Big, which is what we're gonna use today. Oh, and don't forget, our Go has that new handle, comfort that new grip. comfort grip handle. So if you haven't gotten one of those for your Go cutter yet, be sure you put oh, one yeah. of those in your cart. All right, so we're gonna give it a little love. We're gonna slide that mat don't lift. Okay, here we go. Look at how fun this See, is And then we're be. ready to cut some more with this. So that's we really are. fun. Okay, so I'm gonna give you these pieces. And yep, do you wanna just take those? Yep. Yep. All right. So Erica's going to lay out a block here. We're going to get rid of our scraps. But see, look, we did. Did we, we cut enough to do two? Maybe just one. Just one, I think. Okay. But see, look how great this is, because now we just have more scraps. We do. <laughs> In case you didn't have enough. In case you didn't have enough. So remember, we're going down to a point here. Yeah. So that's really all you have to remember. And just keep arranging your pieces. Mm-hmm. And... Our dog ears, and when we talk about those dog ears lining up, look when we put those pieces together. Look you can at that. see that they line up just perfectly on that. And remember, there's gonna be seam allowance between these pieces. Right. So now we're ready for those side pieces. Right. Now, you wanna be sure you lay these out properly. Yes. Because it is possible, because I've done it, to put them on incorrectly and then right. It is not right. In your quilting head, you think it might go this way. Or, but yeah. It, it needs to make a square. Right, so all your all your points are gonna line up together. Right. So if you look at those dog-eared corners, that's really your clue. If you go to line that up and it doesn't line up correctly, think again, quilters. Right. And this is perfect because I'm gonna tell you, we pressed all of our seams open. Here. Yes. There's just so much bulk. There's other. a lot going on, yep. Yeah. But look at how fun that scrappy block it was. It really is. And again, when this is a great chain piecing block, because yeah. you're gonna follow the instructions and you're gonna sew these two pieces and these two pieces, and then add the sides. You mm -hmm. need to sew the center first. So just think about, oh, this may be your scrap busting die. This would be a great one. And you could just keep little boxes or cartons or Ziploc bags, you know, the high-tech Ziploc bags. The high-tech Ziplocs. And label them by your piece. Mm -hmm. and just have them in there and then just reach in and grab. You might wanna do a constant background or you yes. might wanna do all like scrappy low volume. That would be oh, really fun. that would fun. be really fun. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. All right, so now that we've taken a quick peek at what you can do with this die, let's learn a bit more about this block's history from the one and only Barbara Brackman. That's right. Now, Barbara's an independent researcher who has published numerous books about quilts and quilt history. Among them are the recently revised Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Patterns, which indexes published patterns from 1880 to 1970. We use it we all use the it time. All the time. And its companion computer program called Block Base Plus, which we actually sell on our website. Barbara is one of the founding members of the American Quilt Study Group. She writes a blog about quilt history. It's called Material Culture, and it's definitely worth the read. Hey, Barbara, which, what rich history does the Priscilla Stripe have? Hi, it's Barbara Brackman with my minutes of quilt history for AccuQuilt. And this time, let me get my screen up here, show you what we're doing today. Here we are. We're going to talk today about the Priscilla Stripe die. And it's got interesting history. Of course, I find all quilt history interesting. But it's also a pretty pretty dramatic pattern, as you can see by some of the designs here, that the uh, that the designers at Eki Quilt have worked out. I love the watermelon color scheme. Let's go this way. So they find many of the blocks that they used for their dyes in my Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns. Where else? And this is something that I wrote maybe 30 or 40 years ago because I just love to categorize quilt designs. And then it, to be updated, we have over here in the middle the uh, computerized version of it. But here it is uh, in one of its states, the Priscilla. And we call this the Priscilla Stripe, but it's based on this particular block, which is really a beautiful little block and has tons of possibilities. Um, you might be familiar with it as a kaleidoscope in other ways. But the first 
publication of it that I've been able to find was about 1890 in um, a pattern catalog from St. Louis called the Ladies Art Company. And they were very, uh, very popular. They, I think most people just bought their catalog and did not buy the patterns because you had 400 little tiny sketches of quilt designs. And, and most people at that time who could make quilt could draw the pattern. Um, and that's probably still the case today. So here we have the Priscilla, but I have to give you a little background on why it might be called the Priscilla. There was a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow written in 1858 before the Civil War, but it really rang a bell with Americans. And it was supposedly about the courtship of Miles Standish. Now, Miles and Priscilla were uh, colony colonists from England, and they came here in the early 1600s. So I think whatever is known about them is pretty minimal. But the story that's been passed down is that a man named John Alden had a friend named Miles Standish, and he asked, and Miles asked John, to, he was too shy, to speak to Priscilla Alden, the beautiful girl here, depicted about 1900 on the left, to speak to Priscilla and ask if Priscilla would considering marrying Miles. And Priscilla, who had her eye on John anyway, said, why don't you speak for yourself, John? And that romantic kind of Cyrano story really uh, hit a bell, as I say, rang a bell with the American public. This book was incredibly popular. And so we find in 1890, 1900, the 40-year-old poem is still ringing a bell. And Priscilla is one of the kind of colonial touchstones. It's a name. There was a magazine called Modern Priscilla um, that sold needlework kind of a dichotomy there, but Priscilla was shorthand for the colonials, but not just any colonial, the Anglo-Saxon colonials that we love to celebrate during the colonial revival. So that's sort of the philosophical story behind the name Priscilla. Now, once this pattern was out there, it is such a graceful design, it became, there became many different variations on it. Uh, most, many of them are called um, Rocky Road to Kansas. And I live in Kansas. I worked on this book. I think my name's on it. And we, of course, had to have a Rocky Road to Kansas Priscilla design for our cover. This one, uh, we don't know who really who made it. It looks like a group of people made it, all with sort of different aesthetics, but it's a terrific quilt and shows you what you can do with, with a simple pattern and uh, a lot of creativity. So Rocky Road to Kansas was the first publication named for this particular variation, but it's not an even stripe. It is uh, what we call string stripe. I mean, strings are a length of fabric, usually factory cutaways from shirt factories and dress factories, and very popular after about 1880 when these factories were making ready to wear clothing. And he did not want to throw leftovers into the landfill, for heaven's sakes. And so many of these places, um, these factories sold cutaways. And you can see here that uh, the Rocky Road to Kansas was a popular design for the cutaways. On the left, we have a silk version, silk and wool, with a lot of fancy embroidery. Now, some people might call that a crazy quilt, but that's not crazy. That is a Priscilla or a Rocky Road to Kansas. On the right, we have one that's cotton. And you can see in the ads, which are dated to the early 20th century, that you could buy these strings or long lengths of fabric left over from cutting out a shirt or a, a dress. You could buy them fairly cheaply. And I think many, many people did. And they were certainly popular in the South because that's where most of these shirt factories were at the time. But some people do not like a random string. They would much rather have something that is more a stripe. And so I've been looking at the difference between strings and stripes. We're calling this one the Priscilla stripe, not the Priscilla string. And I have found tons of variations on this with many different stripes. And I always wonder if people cut their strings a little more neatly or um, there were factories that just sold 
nicely rectangular strips of fabric, or was this leftover from your, your quilt making or your sewing? What these, both these quilts are from the 1890, 1925 period when the Priscilla and the Rocky Road to Kansas was quite the thing. Now we are doing them in modern fashion. I love the way this one on the left, they've taken the stripe, the middle stripe, and uh, made it disappear. And that way you get the secondary pattern. So that's a whole way to explore design. I've been doing a little bit of exploring. I got a line of more, Leah Moore three productions coming out with Moda in the summer. And so I've been trying to figure out projects for people to do with these. And here's a here's some scrappy, uh, very arts and crafts fabrics on the left, just the repeat. And it works really well. You know, you get this secondary design and I have a heavy line here, but in real life, you would not see that line. Um, and you could certainly quilt that in there and you'd get two stars. Then over here on the right, I have what I often show uh, the counter change shading. I'm a big fan of counter change. What's light background in one block is dark in the next, and that makes a completely different view. So I was also impressed when I started messing around with this that you can set the blocks on the diagonal. On, on both of these, this is the same design. I've used counter change shading, stolen the watermelon idea because it's so nice. But there's some interesting things happening here, too, once you put it on point. And what, you get a, a whole different emphasis. And then if you put it on point and alternate with plain blocks, and, and again, this black line will not show when you're putting your quilt together, but uh, you can quilt and really emphasize that there's an octagon in there. And once you get start getting into octagons, you, people are going to be very impressed with your geometry. But really, it's just careful placement. So... Uh, I think you're going to have fun with this. And when you do, think about Priscilla Alden and John Alden and whatever happened to poor Miles. That's what I want to know. So thanks a lot. Oh, the love triangle. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, I never knew that story. I didn't either. And now I love this block I even do, more. I do too. I just think it's super We fun. knew it was a party, but we didn't know that it was a love story. I love it. And I thought it was really fun to take it as a scrappy block yes. and then do different stitching on yes. it like you would like a crazy quilt. Now, here's the other thing. I thought string quilting yes. was like a new Oh, modern right, quilter no. kind of invention it is not no really it is old 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 technique it's old school yeah. all right and barbara is all knowing thanks for being on our show yes today. yes all right I love her lessons i learned so much i do too <laughs> so much all right and uh, since we learned so much and we're so happy about this new die mm -hmm. i think we should give one away i think so too uh, to a lucky viewer who registered for today's show all right quilters our first lucky winner of a go priscilla stripe love party die six inch finished is party horn please <laughs> Okay, that was an exciting party that was horn. so exciting. Evelyn H. from McDade, Texas. Congratulations. <laughs> Holy smokes, that was some kind of crowd roared. They did. All right. So now that we've taken a look at the basic block that this die makes and how we made it scrappy, right. but we have some other tricks up our sleeve with this one. That's right. Now, if you were with us for the die to try launch of this die, you saw our experts use it to make some really creative yes. borders. And they even used them with panel projects, right. which was really fun. And that's one of those things that you're always looking for ideas right. for. Now, if you missed that show, remember that all of our shows are recorded and they live on, on our website, on our Facebook page, and on our YouTube channel. Yeah, you can just watch them all the time. Yep. Um, so we put our quilting heads together and wondered what this block would look like if we added some sashing between the units. So okay, so the lovely Erica has some So we've blocks. got some, and there's a, oh, look, these are pretty has, scrappy too. She has stuff. I have stuff, so we can look at them because sometimes I need a visual. So right before you do. So we talked about this like at the launch. Yes. How you could make these you know completely different in how you right. set them up. I mean for if you the put borders. them together, yeah. 
Okay, now I'll Borders fix it so like you can this do it. or like this. Yeah. Okay. So if we put two inch finish strips between them, we're going to grow that block to be, instead of a six inch block, it's now going to be an eight inch oh, block. Oh, see, and I do like that sashing between it. Now, if we had, if we had a, if we had a little colored cornerstone, we could even add that. But let's oh, try yes. it a little smaller. Yeah, because I like the smaller idea. Yes. And do one inch finished, okay? Okay, so look at this. So look at this. And then we're going to do this. And, and quilters, this is just a really great idea at home when you're just at home going, huh, I wonder how this look. Look at that. So how about that? Taking like those that same block. units. Now we've made this seven inches now. Right. So we've got a seven inch square. We do. That we could use, or we could add some sashing around the outside of it. Oh, yeah. To bump it up to an eight inch block. Right. Now, if you teamed it with the seven inch or the eight inch, then you would have some just solids, which right, we thought right. was a great idea. And alternating it with the solid square, even like Barbara Brackman showed us that in hers, you can do the same thing with the six inch square if you didn't add all of this sashing and alternate it with that. Any way you look at it, you're gonna get some great real estate there to show off maybe some applique mm -hmm. or some really phenomenal quilting. Yes, I love it. All right, so. We've talked about alternating that. Okay. Now, since we have some really fun, since today's Mardi Gras, yes. we have some really fun Mardi Gras themed embroidery designs that need to be a part of today's show. Absolutely. Holy absolutely. Smokes. So. Here, I'm going to move this. Yeah. Let's, let's get this yes. over here. You've got one and I've got one. Oh, do I? Yes. Oh, heavens. Because they're a, a pair. They are. Because. Oh, here we go. Here I showed. Yes, there we go. Okay. It's our Mardi Gras sunbonnet Sue and overall Sam. And look, they Aren't have those cute? Be beads and a mask and a fleur de lis. These are by our good friends at V Stitch, mm -hmm. and these are adorable. Aren't I they mean, cute? Just absolutely adorable. So, if you mm -hmm. want an embroidery machine, these are available for purchase on our website. Yep. Um, today's National Embroidery Month, so we're going to give you a little discount there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So these are both awfully cute. But how about some party animals like yes. this month's die to try, which is the llama. I know he's I there. He's right here. There's a whole stack of them. There's stacks of. There's a herd. There's a of herd them. of party llamas. Okay. Look okay. at him. Okay. I know who my favorite is. This. Yes. She is my favorite because she is my favorite. She's got such a fancy little blanket, and she's got fancy little, you know, a whatever necklace. necklace. And a little bow. A little bow. And Isn't look, here's sweet? her friend. Look at how cute this is. And then here's just a practical llama. A nice practical I, I llama. I know some practical llamas. Yes. Okay. yes. How about some other party animals? Okay. Oh, we've got some other party animals oh. too. Here, let me move the llamas. Okay. These are so <laughs> fun. So this is our Go Flamingo die. And the Go Flamingo is always go. about a party. Yes. yes. So and this I, is the Go Party Flamingo. And this one is so fun for Isn't it? birthdays and anniversaries and just fun parties with the little confetti. And then I feel like anytime there's a top hat, then right. you're set for Technically, a party. Technically, this is called the Go Flamingo Groom. And there is a Go oh, Flamingo there is a bride. bride as well. But I just felt like with the bow tie and the top hat, he just was looking for a party. And again, these are all from V-Stitch. Yes. Okay. And we've got a couple of great specialty designs using our penguin. Look here. Now, the penguin's using our holiday accessories die over here. Yes. So it's, this is a winter party with a top hat and a scarf. Yes. And then here we've got the little bow tie, and this is from the cookie decorations. Look at how fun those are. So clearly, I mean, let's face it, he's got a tuxedo on every day, every right? Every day. Every day. So you can change up the look of your Priscilla stripe by setting your box on point. We saw okay. Barbara work with that as well. So, so let's just put these here, two together. Here, we'll just set these two on point. We can set these two on point. We they don't really go together, but they don't. But it's that's okay. okay. It's going to give us the idea. Okay, I'm going to just do one, so we can see the corners. Okay. okay. So the setting triangles. Oh, here. Let's show you the die. Let's show you the die first. So. Again, this is on a six by 24 die board. It's gonna fit through all of our go cutters and right. that go me. Right. 
um, and the go and the go big. Mm -hmm. And there are actually three sides. There are blades right here. It's mm -hmm. hard to see them. And then these are the corners. Yes. All right. And you have to be careful with some of our patterns because sometimes on the corners they use two sides. Yes. But for this one, you would use the you corner. Could use a corner. And then look right here. So you've got this space and you want to fill yes. in that space. And Eric and I, back in the day before we had setting triangles, um, there is math involved in this. So and we Eric plain and I, didn't do we it. We just did not do it. We just said, so what I would do, and I think you did the same yes. thing, I would just cut a big square. And then cut and it then from corner, cut in, yep, corner. Cut it in half. But what happens there is that lengthwise that grain. lengthwise grain is off because that puts your bias or the stretchy part of your fabric on the outside. Yeah. Cutting it this way with the lengthwise grain going this way, it's going to make the outside of your project nice and tight. No wonky quilts here. Yeah. So it comes with the side and the the, the side, side and in the, the corner. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just such worth the investment because now I turn blocks on points all the time. All the time. And it makes such a difference in how they look. It does. Well, since this is a relaunch party and we just talked about our party animals, we should, we could include a Priscilla Stripe project. We could. You know. We could. Yeah. Yeah. We could. So, Quilters, what kind of party animal are you and why? We want to know the why love, too. Love we that. ask everybody in the studio and yes. the guys didn't give us a why. No, but we'll tell you in a second. Yeah. So let us know in the comment section wherever you stream the show. Now I'd say that sometimes I am a sloth because my idea of a party can be just putting on my jammies and not doing much. But yes. the rest of the time I'm going to say that I'm a penguin. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, I have to say that lots of times I'm a sloth <laughs> as well. I just do love pajamas. I know, I know. that I'm working from we, home. We, they we are we clean talk. pajamas. We talk to each other yes. and we say, are you in your pajamas yet? Yeah, I mean, I go to the gym and take a shower and put on clean pajamas, okay? But I am gonna say I am a huge flamingo party animal because <laughs> I love a big party. I love lots of noise and lots of people. Now here in the Dream Studio, um, Justin said he was like a squirrel. Yes. Which means he's just running shiny. around. Shiny ball, shiny yep. ball. And what was Brock? Oh gosh, Brock. Owl. He's an owl. owl. Yes, up he's all night, the wise sleep all day. owl. Well, and he's. I feel like Brock is sitting up on the branch, kind of looking down on everyone and getting the lay of the land. There he is. Okay. Okay. And then um, Greg was a monkey. Yes. Just swinging around. I feel like we people. need a little bit more detail on yeah. that one. Hmm. All right. But let us know what you kind of party animal you are in the comments. That's section. right. Well, we've got plenty of other fun ideas for the Go Priscilla Brock today. And pairing it with our cubes is a natural fit. And it's, of course, a natural fit for the six inch cube. But what about using the four inch cube to make a nine inch or a nine patch block like this one? Spiky star. Spiky star. Okay, let's lay it down. And let's lay down a first. Let's stripe. do. So remember the cube system is based on a four patch. Here, it might look better with this one. Okay four patch system okay mm -hmm. so two by two grid yeah but this is a one two three by one two three right so now we've taken that two by two grid grown it and now we've taken the four inch cube to make a six inch block, right which i think is brilliant you could also take the eight inch cube and make a six inch block with the smaller elements yes yes you okay? could so yes, just could. think about that and the possibilities are almost endless but That's don't right. forget about our bob dies I wonder what kind of party animal Bob is. I don't know. I don't know. You're such a funny girl. All right. Now putting your thinking cap on, think about six inch finished block on boards like, oh, this is why they gave me this. Yes. This it goes spider web. Spider web. Okay. Now here, put the scrappy one in here. Yes. Because look, this is how they go together, right? Isn't this fun? <sighs> all the things and so, are you so happy that i am so happy fabric. with that spider web fabric and then you can take that spider web and you can add a spider a spider from the go halloween medley dot and i love this fabric it has halloween scenes like halloween and october, october 31st, 31st and magic and vampires moon. yeah it's my favorite it's fun 
Now, our very own Katie, who was here just last she week. Was, she was, she uh, was. She created some designs using our EQ8 quilt design software. So let's see what Katie has for us. Oh, just <laughs> look at that. Over the edge. So we've got four spider web yes. blocks. Well, actually we've got 12 of them because yes. they're all put together. And but then there's some in the corner, yes. Yes. I and love then that. Two, four, six, eight, nine of the Priscilla stripes. Look how that, I mean, they're a natural to be candy corn, aren't they? They are natural to be candy it's corn. It's like they were born to be candy corn. I feel like that is their purpose. I do too. Okay. I do too. All right. So now that we've talked about my favorite, let's talk about some other. <laughs> All right. Well, we recently talked about the Wonky Heart, right. which is a great six inch finish block. And Katie whipped up a really fun design with cute. that one too. Let's take a look at what she did. <gasps> okay. Oh, look at I how pretty that. this is. And huge shout out to Katie for creating all these graphics for us using um, Mardi Gras colors. Yes. So Erica, let's talk about the difference. Look how dramatic the change is. Yes. If you go from a dark background to the light background. So the dark background of the hearts and the light background of Priscilla Stripes. It just gives it a whole different look. And it really does because there are no curved lines, but look how you get yes. that illusion of a circle around those wonky heart blocks. Yeah. Yeah. It really pulls the eye into them. And I love it in the Mardi Gras colors. Yes. All right, so we talked about setting the block on point earlier and what it might look like. Um, but if we not only set it on point, uh, but teamed it up with the snowball die. So here is a sample of the snowball die. Yes. Uh, look, it has a llama this on it. This one happens to have a lovely llama. It does have a llama. And this one also has a sashing on it. Um, this is the project that we made from Gina Jemposa. Oh, okay. okay. But let's see what Katie dreamed up. <gasps> okay. Ooh. So does that not look completely, completely. different? And the design makes me look at the Arkansas Traveler die right. that also finishes right there in the inch. center. I totally right. see it. Yeah, and so I can see some interesting ideas in my quilting head with that die. Absolutely. As well. Now, if we're going to talk about 12 inch blocks, I think we should talk about the Go Hunter Star. Right here. Okay, so here is the Go Hunter Star. This is a 12 inch finished block. The units. There's four units and they finish at six inches. All right. So, so I feel like Katie's going to have done something pretty clever with this. Gosh. Oh, Already. boy, that's a whole different design, isn't it? Yes. You see something totally different. Let's see what Katie dreamed up with some Mardi Gras colors for us. Oh my. Okay, I have to say that you can hardly see where the Hunter Star is in this. Right. So it's like she's taken that unit and set it on point. Yes. To get that look. Wow. Okay, so we think we, we've created it here. Yes, so with the colors, but look how just turning those units on point makes right. a difference. She's brilliant. Wow. All right, now, quilters, all of the graphics we just showed you are just for inspiration. We don't have any patterns for them. Um, Katie used EQ8 quilt design software to create these amazing designs, and we do sell that software on our website, so be sure and check it out. That's she right. is truly the EQ8 queen. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. All right, after all of this inspiration, we should give away another Priscilla Stripe die, I think, to a lucky viewer who registered for today's show so they can get started on a creative project. Great idea. All right, quilters, our second lucky winner of a Go Priscilla Stripe six inch finish die is Party Horn, please. <laughs> Roxy H of Phoenix, Arizona. Congratulations, Congratulations. Roxy. Oh, so that is super fun. Oh, you are gonna have a great time. All right, now that we have all of our quilting party animals inspired, <laughs> let's inspire them with some more um, ideas with our trunk shop. Oh, that's right. We've got some brand new samples we can't wait to show you. Wait till you and see. wait till you see this first one. It's purple. Okay, listen, did you notice we have new shirts today? We're yeah, loving our new lavender yes, shirts. Lavender shirts. Um, this one is the Go Purple Priscilla wall hanging. It's by Susie Webster of Webster Quilts. Isn't that sweet? This and would this be a great is, table topper too, like right. Lynn's giant dining room table. And this is a really great example of how you put sashing in between and cornerstones mm -hmm. 
And so not between the blocks or, you know, to you know between the, the blocks, not between yeah. the units, between the yeah. units. Yeah. And some really fun little quilting there between it. And then I want to show you the back. Yeah. So you can really see great. the quilting that way. I, Susie did a great job with this. So to me, these are all very modern, bold designs. And yet we know how old the Priscilla block is now, right? So old. All right. So old. This one, Pam is losing her mind over. I just saw it this morning. This is the Go Candy Corn Craze while hanging by our good friend Bia Lee of Bia Quilter. This is what I'm taking home today. I don't even care. <laughs> I don't care if it's in an inventory. I don't care if somebody's looking for it. I love this. And I think it's so fun because just like the other project, this is like a weekend project. Oh, yes. Take your little candy corn scraps of orange and yellow and yes. white and get you some black background and make this beautiful. And already in my quilting head, I think I want to do the background in that Halloween words fabric. Oh, yeah. It truly is Halloween-y. I was just thinking I want to make this for pillow covers. Oh, yes. For the pillows on my couch. I think that would be really it's a super size. fun. It's it a perfect really size. It really is. All right. All right. We've got another one. Oh, this, this is, one is so fun. This is the Go Priscilla's Parallelograms mini quilt by our good friend Marianne Fontana of Fontana Originals. And she used a little mode of grunge. So all things beautiful. There we go. Okay. So Erica, talk about this because so, the, the center is Priscilla stripes, but what are the sides until you so get to the edge? So here's the center. Yes. And then here we have units. Yes. Okay, and you can see we've talked about how the units can be pointed different directions, but here we've got our parallelogram units. And remember, two of those together are going to equal that three inch finished unit, yes. just like on the Priscilla stripe if we're using our six inch cube. Right, it looks super complicated. It is not. It is it's not. Just two dies. That's well, right. Three dies. You need so we've got the Priscilla five. stripe, we've got the parallelogram, and we've got our small half square triangle. So shapes five here and seven here. That's all it is, plus your binding. This would go super fast. Great and chain piecing project. This is a great chain piecing project. And of course, um, she used her six inch cube. Yes, that's right. All right. Now let's look at some more quilts and some alternate colorways that were created to fit yes. with today's theme using our Go Quilt. It is our free design tool available at AccuQuilt.com. Okay, so the first one is the one, is our party hat one. This right. is the Go Pinata Party Hat Wall Hanging by Bia Lee of Bia Quilter. And this is the one that's on the packaging. So when you go to the uh, Priscilla Stripes uh when product you go page product on the page. website. Yep, this is the video you get to see the lovely yes. Eric and I make. Scroll down, we made this project. Yep. It's really fun. And it does look like party hats. Okay, but check out our Go Quilt Mardi Gras colorway. Look at this. Ah, these are so fun. So again, Erica, we talked about the background color makes all the difference, right? And so I actually like the yellow background for this and particular I think project. I'm leaning towards the white background mm -hmm. on this one, but they're all spectacular. The green one kind of looks like purple pansies. Oh, yes, it does. Yes. Those purple yellow pansies. Yeah. I'm ready for pansies in spring. Yeah, it's going to be like negative two tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, but we've got more. Remember that watermelon? This is actually one of my favorite quilts that we made um, for the lunch. And, and this is made, I didn't make it. Ellen Alt of Handmade 3D made it, and she used Robert Kaufman fabric, yes. and it looks like watermelon. It is, but you know, it could also be spring flowers. It could. So could. I really like this one. I just love the colors that she used in them. I and think this would be really fun for like a picnic blanket. So you could put yes. sashing between the blocks and open it up and just make it super fun for a summer picnic. And listen, if you're gonna do that, this is the fabric you need for the Oh pack. yes, totally. Because it has that cute watermelon fabric. And I think it would look nice on my deck. It would, it would, Erica. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that. All right, let's look at it with some Mardi Gras colors. Okay, totally, completely different. Oh my. And in this case, I like the white background. Do you? Mm -hmm, I do. I I'm, I'm think I'm gonna go with the black background for this yeah, one. Yeah, totally different. Yeah. 
right? But I do like, I mean, I like all of them, but I like how it showcases <laughs> the design. Them. I like right. all of them. So think about but this. We can't make all of them. Well, no, we could, no. But we might I mean, run out of time. We can't. And we're talking right now because today is Mardi Gras and Mardi Gras right. colors. But think about 4th of July, think about fall, think about right. Christmas, right. all of those kind of things. Exactly. All right, here's one of Erica's favorites. Oh, it really is. This is the Go Priscilla in Ohio Throw Quilt by Susie Webster of Webster Quilts. Okay, Susie, kudos to you because she used great batik fabric. She did. Here is that Priscilla stripe and these beautiful greens and then this bright purple and pink colors. This is so is the fun. Accent. And then she did sashing and cornerstones, which I think really gives it such a, just a bright color. Again, this is a very contemporary look with a couple of super classic blocks. I mean, you yeah. don't get much more classic than an Ohio star, right? Right, and she used her four inch cube to make that yes. Ohio star because now it's a nine patch. So right. just like the spiky star we talked about. Exactly. And the border is perfect. I do believe I have some of this fabric at home. <laughs> it does look strangely familiar, doesn't yes. it? Yes. All right, we've got some Mardi Gras colors coming up. Let's take a look. <gasps> okay, which one's your favorite here, Miss Erica? Okay, the white background. Yeah, I kind of like the gray. I, Just because it gives it a little different look. I love white backgrounds. I've really been doing a lot with white backgrounds. It really shows off the Ohio star well. Oh, the gray yes, does too, true. though. The gray does too. Yeah, you kind of lose the look of the Ohio star mm -hmm. in the center one, but I think that's also super but cool. It looks like those square on point shapes are just floating in there. Yeah. And that's kind of a cool thing too. Yeah. All right, our last one is, okay, listen. We oh. know it is February. Um, Christmas Stars Table Runner by Katie Swigert of Katie Quilts. That's right. Listen, you should start right now on your Christmas projects. Well, you should, because if you're like me, it's gonna take you that long to get, okay. you know, everything done. But look how fun this is. So we've got four complete blocks down the center, and then these are two units, so partial blocks. Mm -hmm. And then look how she's done three units to turn the corners. Right. And it took me a hot minute to realize it, the Priscilla stripe is in green. Yes. You kind of have to look at that. But really this is look at a it. basic template pattern. We talk about this yes. all the time. You could make this 4th of July, you could make it spring, you could make it Easter, you could make it. Make, match any decor. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking the, um, you know, since Priscilla Stripe is based on a love story, this would be kind of a cool pattern to make like for a bed runner for a wedding gift. I think so too. In the you wedding can use wedding colors. Mm -hmm. Love it. Oh, but okay, look at the plaid on the back. Plaid on the back. And she just did fun stippling on it. Yep. Which yeah. I think is And great. it's fabulous looking. Well, let's take a look at it all dressed up for Mardi Gras. Okay, which one is your favorite, Erica? Because I'm loving the gray. I'm loving, loving the gray. I am loving the gray in this one. Yeah, totally. I love it because it just has such a great modern look. I like the purple, though. You know how I feel about purple. I know. It kind of Nothing looks... Nothing like a big purple pop to... It's just so pretty. Pop a purple. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, quilters, all of the patterns of the quilts we showed you are available as free downloads on the AccuQuilt website. Be sure to download your patterns before the die arrives so you'll be all ready to go. That's right. Now, also, we made our alternate looks for today's show using yes. two different types of computer programs, just so you don't get confused. EQ8 is a software to help you design a complete quilt. That's what you saw yes. first. Yes. It's sold on our website as well as at many of your local retailers. And Go Quilt is a free design tool on our AccuQuilt.com website that helps you reimagine colors for existing patterns. Yes. So Eric and I use this all the time. So we'll look at a pattern. You can take pictures of your fabric. You can upload it. Yes. We have libraries of color. So EQ8 is designing a whole quilt. Go, Go quilt, quilt is changing the color. Reimagining. And existing and we have thousands patterns. of patterns on there. Yes, we do. Okay, well, um, I obviously am taking the candy corn. Um, I'm gonna be grabbing the Priscilla in Ohio off the back block. Oh, there off you the go. Back wall, I yeah, think. Yeah, Lynn's not here. I feel like we should be adding to Rock our. Rock won't own notice, will he? He will not. <laughs> He's busy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, All right. We'll along with having the patterns ready, you also need some fabric, right? Now, luckily, our good friends at Vanyan Batiks want to help us make this party a 
even more exciting. So they provided us with two fun selections of fabric to give away. Now the new rules of engagement here yes. are that they do not show us the fabric until we are on camera. So during the last break, Justin snuck this fabric over. Oh my gosh. Look okay, at this. Hold that it's okay, weird. so this is going to be my bundle. This is Banyan Batiks, and look at these delicious colors. Oh, scraps. Oh my gosh. Aren't those fun? These are beautiful fat quarters, and I love this design. I do too. Because it has all the other colors in it. Oh, but. Okay, this is the. But wait, look one at this taking. one. So this has got greens, but look at this with the pluses. And, and the, the little stripes, these blues are yummy. <gasps> There's a metallic. I don't know that I've ever seen the metallic on a batik I've before. I've never seen one. <gasps> oh, Banyan batiks, you sneaky people. Look at this one. It was best they didn't show us this It really before. is. And I love this one with the pop of the light blue. Okay, so these are clearly, if we were to pick, if we were fabric bundles, this would be Pam and this Gosh. would be me. <laughs> If we got to walk out of here today with these, which we don't, we're going to send them to two lucky viewers. That's right. So the first one of our selection of this delicious fabric is, party horn please. <laughs> Margaret J of Seattle, Washington. Congratulations. That party horn gets horn. me every time. That party horn Maybe it was a fog horn for Seattle. It does sound more <laughs> like a fog horn than it does a party horn. All right. The winner of the second selection of fabrics, and we don't know who's getting which one, Party horn, please. <laughs> oh, it's Vicki S. from Hastings, Michigan. Congratulations. All right, a huge thank you to Banyan Boutiques for sponsoring today's show. These are fabulous fat they quarter bundles. They really are. Our quilters are gonna have last making Priscilla Stripe projects with this fabric. Oh, yes. Oh. All right, quilters, the time has come. Now, we ask what kind of party animal you are, and it's time to hear what you had to say. Listen, I'm still over the fabric. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, Alyssa. Alyssa's a mother hen to her group of friends. <laughs> I love I this. see that, I can see that. I love this. Okay, Emily says she's a bear. She's a big fan of hibernation. <laughs> okay, time. so the bear might be hanging out with yeah, our sloths. I was gonna say the bear <laughs> and the sloths. Adrienne B says she's a wolf Ooh. because she loves to watch and howl at the moon. Okay. Okay. Michelle B is a llama. She's the life of the party. I love that. I love it. Dorothy is a dolphin. Loves pool parties. Oh, oh I could totally be down with that. Sam could be a dolphin too. Yeah. Uh, Amberly F is a dinosaur. Fierce and fabulous. Oh, I like that. I like that. And dinosaurs, Fierce. I feel like they don't care, right? Yeah, I mean, they don't just care. Just ruling all the things. Um, Anne is a chimp. She's kind of like a monkey, uh, swinging from one project to another. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, Nanny E P is a zebra. Oh, I think that's great. I did, do too. Did you watch the show where we talked did about you the talked zebra? about the zebra? And yeah. Fox said, uh, Pam, why wouldn't you just, just use zebra, zebra fabric? Fabric. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a die for that. Um, DJ is a road runner, always on the go. I think that's and fabulous. Go. We appreciate yeah, that. She did the go. Elaine T is a puppy. She loves fun and action. That's fun. These are so great. These are great. Okay, yeah. Mavis H is a panda. Okay. Oh. I, I, my granddaughter Oakley loves panda videos. So whenever <laughs> she's with me and she has my phone, she's like, let's look at panda videos on YouTube. There are millions of them and they roll and they love each other and they're hilarious. <laughs> Gayla R says a duck. She loves to dance. I, I didn't know ducks dance, but I they like do that. in the rain and all of oh, that. Yes, right? and they really enjoy life. They do. I think yeah. that's great. And Marsha S um, says she's a bunny. She hops around at parties. <laughs> okay, these were fabulous. great. This was the best. This is great. All right, quilters, we have tons of deals available for you on our website. Oh, today. we most certainly do. To get your order in, open a new tab on your browser. Type in accuquilt.com slash party to go to the site see the offers and place your orders. All right, we hope that you've had so much fun with us on Mardi Gras today, and it is time for the lovely Eric and I to get ready for our next show. We hope that today's trunk show was just what you needed to inspire you to modernize this classic block. See you next time. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. 
You can visit the events page on AccuQuilt's website for more details on upcoming shows. And while you're there, check out the blog for tips, tricks, tutorials, and inspiration galore. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Check out our events page to register for upcoming events. Registering for each event means that you're entered to win a door prize that we'll give away during the show. And join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. Tomorrow, the lovely Erica will be working on the Go Stars in the Crown throw quilt alongside all of you. Hey, and if you're going to Daytona, I'll be in the lounge all week. Stop by and say hi. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for more launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be having a Greenfield Trunk Show to prepare you for St. Patrick's Day and Spring. Join us then.